Uh, let's go ahead and get started here. It is February 9th. We are, uh, like I said, about one year into pandemic hell. <laughs> and um, uh, you guys are my social group that I get to see every once in a while. And um, I have to say, it's nice. I know it's good to see faces I haven't seen in a while. And, um, and, and people I talked to on the phone, some of you, um, but it's kind of cool to see everybody here. There's been some, uh, I, I made a little list here of things I want to talk about because um, uh, I don't have any guest stars today on the call. I thought we'd just go back to kind of just having our own little thing here. And, um, but there's some pretty interesting stuff that's happened over the last couple of weeks. And I thought it'd be worth uh, kind of starting with that. And then if, if you guys want to ask any questions, uh, we can go to that uh, toward the end here. So I will start with something that just got done about literally maybe half an hour ago. I was trying to jam and get it done before this call. Um, I just added some new trips to 2022. Um, I know that uh, some of you, uh, Ian, you're one of them, we were talking about future trips to Costa Rica and stuff. And so I just um, locked in dates uh, for 2022. Unfortunately, 2020, 2020 was mostly scrubbed other than November. We got that one trip to Costa Rica. But uh, 2021, um, is mostly sold out for Africa. Uh, Costa Rica, April trip is now opening more because we've had some people slip out. So December's oversold. And then, so I've added two more trips into 2022. So if you go to the website and go to the photo tours page, literally got updated about like 20 minutes ago. Um, so those dates are on there. Um, so that's kind of cool to get those going. Uh, we also have the two trips to Africa for 2022. Those are already selling. So I think what's happening is um, now that people are getting their shots, uh, people are all hoping that we go to some sense of normalcy, whatever the hell that might be, um, over the next, you know, six months or so that we get back to normal and then we can travel and everybody's going to want to travel. So I would love to see a raise of hands. Anybody on this call already have their first shot or second shot? No. Wow. I'm in the second group. I'm in phase two. So I'm hoping in the next, well... That even even our own health department doesn't know what phase two is going to be like yet. Yeah. So I'm hoping in the next three weeks. But there, are, get, there are a I'll lot get. of hands there. I saw at least eight or ten hands up, which is great. I mean, I know in California we've been behind. two weeks ago. Was that two weeks ago? It's all our it's all two, two weeks ago. <laughs> and was that Greg? It's all us older people that are able to get them. I'll tell you <laughs> what, though, I'm I'm jealous. Uh, well, I'm not jealous of being old, but <laughs> I'm, I'm, I would love to get the shots. And actually, um, one of the questions I had for the U.S. Olympic Committee that we're still waiting to hear on is whether or not they're going to um, get us uh, shots. I, I think by then it'll be it'll happen anyway because it'll be late July, but we shall see. It's good to see that uh, so many people are getting them. Um, I'm hoping that that trend keeps going. Sarah, uh, the, the Bay Area and California has been behind. I just saw in the news this morning, we're up to 4 million out of the, I believe it's 30 million here. So we're over 10%, which is good because that's the older population that are more susceptible to serious issues. So um, that's good to hear. So anyway, so hopefully with all of that, tra travel will come back. And, and uh, um, I, you know, for me, I miss both. I miss the photography of traveling. I miss the camaraderie of the people we go with because we have so much fun and yep. um and just the newness of it so it's uh it's all the above and, I, and i'm just so looking forward to get moving again here so um the super bowl we talked about football a couple minutes ago hey hey jeff and, just real yep, quick yeah um i i read this uh yesterday i think johnson and johnson vaccine is supposed to dump 100 million vaccines into the u.s by the end of june so there should definitely be vaccines by, by, by the Olympics. Yeah, I think so too. Then the question will be, and I've heard, so I also heard the AstraZeneca one not only helps with getting it, but also giving it uh, so you don't spread it, which, you know, who knows. But at this point, I mean, like I said, just getting the numbers, you know, and, and hopefully stopping in the, the variances that are happening. So, I mean, I think things are looking up. I think um, you know it's nice to be on this call and actually see people raising their hands that they've got it. Um, 
and and so I, that's that little ray of hope. I mean, it's kind of weird. I wake up in the morning. This morning I was up at four thirty in the morning, just thinking like, when's this gonna be over? You know, because it's like this. I don't know if you guys feel like this. I feel like it's a blanket of um, not negative. Well, negativity basically. That's just kind of weighing on everybody. So, you know, and uh, the other thing that's kind of funny is if you're in the corporate world, you live on Zoom all the time. And I don't like I do the Zoom calls with you guys, and I do Zoom calls periodically with other people. But I'm not on it all day long. And today it's been all day long um, with different meetings. And then I've got one right after this with one of my sponsors. So it's going to be like, it's like living in the corporate land for one day. Um, but going back to the Super Bowl, and I know some of you guys have chimed in on this. I put it on social media. Um, so I put a post on social media a couple of days ago that I was kind of dumbfounded watching the Super Bowl because I haven't watched tons of football this year, but like in the end zones during the, the touchdowns and stuff, they had this shot. I don't know if you, how many of you guys noticed it. And it was a really wide open, like F, it looked like an F 1.2 uh, type shot and dramatically out of focus. And I know that some people chimed in on social media and said, hey, we liked it or we liked the idea of it, which I, I get or that they're trying to avoid backgrounds because the fact that they were cut, cardboard cut out versus real people. But man, the fact that the, it was, the focus was so wildly off really was bugging me. And it was like, like I could, you know, and I know Jason, you and I talked about this uh, earlier in the week or the weekend. Christopher, are you drinking already? Wow, that's pretty good. Good for you. Yeah, that's two. Um, but anyway, busted. Uh, and I like the picture behind you. It looks like one of our Costa Rica shots. Anyway, but uh, so going back to, so the, the shot was really narrow. Um, and it, it's interesting because if you shoot wide angle, even at 2.8 or F4, everything's going to be in focus. But they chose to go, and, and again, it looked to me like it was an F1.2 or even 1.0. It was really, really narrow. But the problem was the, the focus, the accurate focus point seemed like it was maybe... 10% of the time. And I went back before I posted on social media and I looked at numerous shots and it wasn't like they were in focus most of the time and then drifting out. It was like they were out of focus and drifted in and then back <laughs> out again. And so uh, for, for, you know, for watching the Super Bowl and, and being a photographer, it was really freaking me out. And um and I almost didn't post anything. I had a couple other photographers that I, that I don't know that were writing to me saying, are you seeing this too? And I'm like, yeah, I'm seeing this. And I decided last minute to post it. And, uh, and the feedback was pretty incredible. There were literally, I think over a hundred comments, uh, mostly negative um, for that effect. And some people said, well, hey, at least they're trying to do something new um, or they're making that attempt. But to me, it was almost more frustrating than it was artistic or helpful. So um, I, I, I just thought that was interesting that that was the case. And, um, you know, I, I guess I had two issues. One is the, the rumors they were using either the, the uh, Sony A7R4, I believe it was, or the A1, the Alpha 1, um, regardless of the camera, and actually, it's funny because everybody's talking about what camera they were using. I don't really care what camera we're using. I want to know what lens they were using. And no one's mentioned that yet. I've heard rumors of a 24 to 105 or 24 70. It didn't look like that to me. Um, it definitely did not look like a 28 lens. But um, no one has said the lens they're using. And then my other issue isn't even the camera or even the photographer, because they're probably the videographer or whoever's running is probably working as hard as they can to, to achieve focus. But why did the director keep going back to it when it was so poor? Like if I'm directing the Super Bowl and I see that 80% of the shots are out of focus by a lot, I wouldn't be cutting back and forth to it all the time. And they kept doing it. And I don't know about you guys, but as someone who understands focus and everything, it was just really kind of like ticking me off a bit. Like it's not working, stop. And they just kept going back to it. So. Um, there's my rant for the Super Bowl. And of course, the game itself was like, you know, okay, um, you know, not the most exciting game. It was, of course, billed to be something that it never ended up being. And even the commercials were, you know, okay, but nothing stellar. So I guess it was a bit like, 
our, our last 12 months where it was a bit lackluster. Yeah, so, exactly. Yeah. Did other, uh, any other thoughts from you guys on that? I just if think more, if they're going to try something different, like why are you going to try it at the Super Bowl? <laughs> like if it, or practice it first. Or try they it have out. been, they you have know? been doing it. They have been doing it throughout the season. Fox actually started uh, doing the camera the, the portrait view camera is what the announcers were calling it. Um, I'm a huge football fanatic and Fox started it halfway through the season. Uh, CBS, for whatever reason, decided to get on the bandwagon uh, at the Super Bowl. They didn't do it for the rest of the year, just last minute. So I don't know why, I guess, because, you know, monkey see monkey do, right? But uh, as, a can as, a, as a Sony shooter, they should have used the Canon, right? Right, Jeff? <laughs> Absolutely. You know, it's funny because when I did the rant, I thought, holy cow, that better not be a Canon because Canon's not going to be happy with me. But you know, here's the thing. Part of it is the eye detection, which I, what I've heard is that because the eye detection was trying to find an eye and then they turn and you get the back of a helmet. So the focus would just like go drifting off into nowhere. But um, I have found, at least with, preliminarily with, with the R5 and R6, that as long as it locks in on something, It'll, it'll at least stay close to the eye. Um, so it will be interesting. I, I don't, again, I, I don't want to blame it on a Sony thing, but uh, clearly somewhere along the lines it missed, whether it was the person working the camera, the camera, the lens, uh, or hell, the subjects that were moving too much, but it didn't work, you know, flat out. So um, I, I can, I yeah. can speak oh. to being both a Canon and Sony shooter. Um, Sony's autofocus for video is not, Canons. Uh, that's why I'm on a Canon when I shoot video, uh, because my Sonys can't keep up for mo for for tracking videos autofocus. They just don't. They don't do it. So Jeff, yeah. I just wanted to say it's five o'clock on the East Coast. So. <laughs> oh, that's true. All right, you're allowed to drink. Yeah, I, right, okay. Drink. I will. <laughs> Oh, God. And yes, that shot is from Co Costa Rica. Yeah, I thought, I thought so. I saw those. There's three monkeys in the shot right now. No, <laughs> no you're, you're the third one. Uh, that's cool. Good to see that there, Chris. Um, so moving from, uh, from the Super Bowl to uh, even bigger events, which would be the Olympics, um, I did a blog post that you guys might have seen uh, in that... Uh, um, just kind of talking about what's going on. And it was interesting because a couple weeks ago, I think it might have been right around the time of our last Zoom call. And it was like, oh boy, um, you know, the Olympics, the rumor was that it was not going to happen. And uh, one of the high ups in the Japanese government um, secretly leaked that it wasn't going to happen. And um, I, a lot of emails, text messages, phone calls from, from people saying, what do you think? And, um, and basically, uh, you know, I, at that point, I was kind of surprised too. But um, subsequently, uh, within a not even a day of that, probably within hours of that, I was getting a message uh, from the officials saying that was not true. And then publicly, it came out the next day on the news saying that it was not true. But um, I can tell you, the weird thing is, literally, almost since that day, it's been a onslaught like a deluge of, of emails coming in from from um, from the IOC from TOCOG which is the Tokyo Organizing Committee the USOC USOPC um, all these entities are just like barraging us with information so um, it does look to me like it will happen like I said in the blog I think it's gonna happen for a lot of reasons I think these athletes have worked really hard to um, and need a venue to, to perform uh, I think financially, I think there's so much uh, at stake. And I think from a televised perspective, it, there's so much more revenue there than even in person. So um, I, 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 I won't be surprised if they happen. I do believe they will. They did on um, tomorrow, at, or actually tonight, well, tomorrow, three in the morning, my time, um, they're doing a uh, press conference for the media uh, from Japan um, I did sign up for it until I realized it was three in the morning. I probably uh, will not do that, although I'm hoping they're going to record it. But I do have the playbook already, um, which lists out everything. And it's interesting because 
And I put a lot of this in the blog of what they're saying, but you know, clearly it looks like we'll be wearing masks. They'll be limiting people into the audience, uh, into the, um, you know, for, for uh, spectators, It'd probably be friends and family and maybe VIPs, maybe at 25% or 50%, I don't know. Um, but uh, it'll be very different than any other experience, which is both good and bad. I mean, you know, as I said in the blog, the challenge of doing the Olympics is it's just daunting. It's really hard. It's crazy hours. It's stressful. So to add on to that is going to be really interesting because um, it's going to make it even harder, I think. Like, for instance, one of the things that, that I do when I go to the Olympics is if there's times I'll be walking by, I'll be finished shooting contractual work, and then I'll walk by three venues. And I'll be like, oh, like, oh I wonder what's going on in that one right now. And I'll kind of peek in and go, oh, wow, this is a cool boxing match. Or I'm going to shoot that for a little bit. Well, it sounds like that's not going to be possible. I think it sounds like they're going to make us make reservations in advance for the venues we want to be into. So I'm going to have to pre-plan everything way more than in the past. Now, contractual work for US, you know, for USA Water Polo, that's a given. Um, but I'll have to plan out my other days in advance, which will be really weird. Now, unless it's an outside uh, sport, that may not be an issue. Or maybe things have changed. Or maybe if you're if you have the vaccines, you're allowed more, who knows? But, um, and the other thing is they also said that we have to stay within uh, two meters of any athlete, which for most people is probably not a big deal, but I interact with the, with the team members quite a bit. So it'll be interesting to see how that uh, affects me. And I'm, you know, I shoot in the locker room and stuff like that. So um, it will be interesting to see what happens. But the interesting thing from your perspective, I think will be, unlike any other Olympics, uh, maybe since Sochi. Sochi was the first Olympics where it was a real mess. Uh, hotels were not built. Uh, you know, I, when I was there, uh, the room I was moving, my hotel room, and I use that term loosely, <laughs> um, no shower curtain, uh, unfinished furniture, TV that never worked. Uh, most of the outlets didn't work. Most of the light sockets didn't work. Um, Wi-Fi didn't work for most of the Olympics until the last five days, I think. It was a mess, but the story was interesting. And I think we're gonna be in something similar if Tokyo really goes through, which I think it will. It's gonna be an interesting story to see what it's like compared to any other Olympics. So um, I think from a photographer standpoint, I'm gonna to try to embrace it as, okay, this is gonna be more of a challenge, but at the same time, it's gonna be really different than any other yeah. games because I mean, yeah. It'll be, um, you know, it'll be really strange to walk through an Olympic park if there's no public there. Like that would be very bizarre to not not be interacting with all the fans because honestly, that is part of the what gets me fired up is that ability or to turn the camera around and capture the fans and the, you know, that are all excited. If you're missing that energy, what's it going to be like? For me, what's it going to be like for the athletes? What's it going to be like, you know, um, in the buildings and on TV? Are they going to, you know, fake the audience sound like they do today for a lot of the sports? So it'll be, um, and, and the other thing I should mention is, if you've seen pictures of my past games, you'll see there are literally 500 people crammed in to shoot pictures of Michael Phelps in the pool. Well, they're not going to allow that because that's not you know, socially distanced. How are they going to fit that in? Are they going to put only, you know, 200 people in the place of five or 600? So now it's going to be really limited. So I think the ticketing, which they require for high impact events, may be something that has to happen for a lot more events, which, which would be interesting because that's going to also um, really um, put a stranglehold on the media for who's going to be allowed to focus okay. or to photograph what. So. Um, it will be interesting and I will learn more. Um, I'll learn, hopefully learn more tomorrow based on the information I get. And then um, as we get closer to the games, uh, I'll start blogging what I'm learning and kind of talk about the, the prep of that. So, you know, that's, uh, that's kind of where we are in that. Then the big burning question, what camera will I be using at the end? Yes. Everybody <laughs> wants to know. And uh, and so um, uh, I have not. Let's see. How do I broach this? I have not heard anything official from uh, our friends at Canon. 
um, on a new camera. Although I can say that my gut feeling is that uh, there will be uh, a, a camera from Canon that will take an R5, R6 type approach at a pro level. Um, and I did a blog about what I'd like to see uh, from that camera. And I had some very interesting feedback, a bunch of kind of like little thumbs up from my friends at Canon, like that's a good idea. Um, and so, uh, you know, it's, I really like the R5 and R6. I, I, can they improve on the focus even more? Yes. Can they make it faster again? Yes. Can they make it um, with a bigger battery? They could. I definitely want, you know, I, um, I've got my uh, CF, Express, CF Express cards here. And, um, you know, these things are wicked fast versus my SD cards, which are sitting there, which are not nearly as fast. So I'd rather shoot to a camera that writes to two CF Express cards simultaneously. And so um, I, I put my wish list down on that blog. I, I do believe that um, I do believe that Canon is going to address those for the Olympics before the games. Now, whether it's shipping or not before the Olympics is a different story or so I don't know. And again, this is just a guess. Am I Am I using a new camera? Am I using a prototype of a new camera? Um, and my hope is that they have something at least announced by then um, so I can talk about what I'm using because uh, otherwise I've got to black out the camera and do all kinds of crap so that no one knows what I'm using, um, which is a challenge at the Olympics because you're surrounded by you know a couple thousand other photographers and everybody wants to see what you've got in your hands. So um, again, nothing uh, officially from Canon, uh, my gut is that there will be, you know, something to answer. Sony uh, announced their Alpha One, um, which looks pretty solid um, as a camera, um, and I'd love to see Canon come out and and surpass that. So, um, you know, I think, like I said in the vlog, I don't need tons of megapixels. I just really need 20, 25 is fine. I don't need 50, 60, whatever. Um, I, 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 like I said in the blog, what I would really love to have is a camera that lets me select that. I'd like to have a 50 megapixel. No, I'd like to kick it down to 30 or 15. Because so depending on what I'm shooting, I can actually make that determination. So the reason I want that is if I'm shooting the Olympic Games, uh, 20 megapixels is fine for most of what I'm shooting. When I'm shooting in Africa, when I may want to actually do some digital cropping or some cropping of the file, I'd like to actually have more megapixels. The other thing is at the uh, Olympic games or sorry, in Africa, I've got a lot more light. I'm shooting outdoors. Um, and so I can uh, crank, I don't have to crank up the ISO. So maybe if I've got less, I'm shooting less megapixels, I can get cleaner ISO. So these are all things that I'd like to see. Um, I, my guess is that um, if I do get this camera in my hands, um, I probably won't be able to tell you about it because um, I'll, I'll be under non-disclosure for a while um, while I'm playing with it. Um, I could tell you that my request to Canon is any new camera that I get before any Olympics, and this has been true in the past games, I ask for one at least six weeks in advance because I, I need to become inherently knowledgeable about every feature of it and be trained on it. Okay. By Canon, so that when I go, I'm not trying to figure it out. And so um, we'll see how that plays out. But I, I, I suspect that they will make an announcement because I think that they've got to, you know, come back and say if Sony's got a bunch of Alpha ones at the games, Canon's going to want to talk about what what they're doing there too. So um, I'm hoping. What do we at? February. You know, maybe in the next three months, maybe I can say something. We'll see. So. I know that they're they're not sitting in the, on their laurels and just saying, "Gee, the R5 is good, or the R6." Um, they're going to come back and they're going to they're going to do something to address the the pro kind of sports type market. So um, the other thing is, you know, batteries. If you look at the the battery for the the R5 R6, you know, it's nice and it actually shoots about. You know, they say it'll shoot three or four hundred shots. I usually get well over a thousand uh, on the battery, but when you shoot in the Olympic Games, a thousand is not very long that could be half an hour of shooting uh, for the way we blast out images there so um it would be interesting to see if they do something like they did on the 1d where it's the really large size battery um 
and uh, in, in an RSI, you know, into a mirrorless camera, and I, and um, or do they come up with maybe two slots for two of these batteries? I don't know. So it'd be interesting to see what they do there. I'm not a huge fan of the actual grip. I'd rather have a full pro camera, uh, have it all built in, and just not have the grip to deal with. So, um, and of course, my other question then was uh, beyond just the camera, might there be new lenses? Um, like the 200 to 400, that's my kind of go-to lens for the Olympic Games, um, is obviously only in EF format, not in RF format. So would they actually tackle that and come out with a, a 200 to 400 with a built-in teleadapter for RF? Or, uh, or, or do I just use the 100 to 500 if I'm shooting outdoors? It's a smaller, easier lens to travel with. So um, more questions that... Uh, I have for them and uh, that they won't answer for me right now anyway. So, but, uh, but I, I, I do suspect that uh, um, you'll see something. Any chance we'll have a, a crop R7? Say one more time. Any chance we'll have something like a, a crop R7? Uh... You know, John, I, you know, it's funny. I don't know. Uh, I've had numerous people ask, uh, email me and ask me that. And, you know, it's interesting because I'll tell you my gut feeling. My gut feeling on that is, I don't like crop sensor and I, and I know that it gets you closer in when we're shooting, but um, I actually prefer, I would actually prefer to shoot higher megapixel and crop later if it can maintain that same image quality as a crop sensor in anyway. But um, I, I found that once you go full frame, it's hard to go back to crop. So um, I don't know if they will or not, but they could, I mean, it would save them some money on the sensor side. So they, it's possible. Uh, again, I've never asked the question, um, but I can, and I will uh, see, you know, it'd be really interesting because of the Olympics. So if you, you know, in the past, they've let me into the back room and the back room is where they have <laughs> all the good stuff. So uh, it's heaven. It, it, it is heaven. And actually, actually, hold on two seconds. I just noticed this needs to be turned up a bit here. Oh, my batteries get low. Um, I got my LED light here. Um, so the, uh, that back room will be very interesting this time because I want to see, there it goes, well, there goes the battery. Um, it'll be interesting to see what happens because I think that, um, yeah, I'd love to see lots of new RF lenses would be kind of cool. So uh, yeah, let me just crank up the brightness here on this. I lost my LED. I thought it was charged, it wasn't, so there. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention, and I have not announced this at all, but if you go to my website, I did actually uh, upload a bunch of stuff to Etsy. I've been talking about doing it for a couple of years and finally did it. So, um, so I've got images for sale from all over the world on Etsy. And now you're gonna ask me what my Etsy name is. I think it's just Jeff Cable Photography that's on there. But there's a link from the website that says purchase images that'll take you there. If you wanna take a look at that, that is now live as of about three weeks ago, I think. So, oh, cool. Congratulations. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah, I just sold a couple uh, yesterday. So, yeah, just something fun to try. Um, you know, just yeah. to, so um, your stuff, your stuff's great. And so that's great that other people who don't aren't photographers, but, you know, can can actually can one, have your work on their wall. One of the guys that uh, ordered an image wrote to me um, last night and said that it was one of my shots of a leopard in uh, Tanzania. And he said uh, he and his daughter had gone and they got cool images because they're using their photography, but they didn't get a good image of a leopard. So they're going to use that one, which is kind of cool. That'd be on someone's wall. I'm totally thrilled with that. So um, so if you want to check that out, if you just go to the website and go to purchase images, you can see that there. So there, that's what I got. So now cool. if you guys have any questions or feedback or want to cover any things we just talked about, open forum. Go ahead and fire away. Actually, I haven't looked to see. Let me look at the chat. Hold on here. I'm going to just uh, see here. <laughs> I love the comment from Will. I assume that's about the Super Bowl. There's a lot of people who are frustrated. And the other thing that's interesting is a lot of people didn't notice it. Like if you're not a photographer, you just say, oh, that was artistic. Yeah. If you're a photographer, you're like, God, that was out of focus. Yeah. Um, let's see here. Yeah, Terrell, I did see that I did see that they are alpha ones uh, as well, which is interesting because then it makes you wonder, like, how good is the alpha one? Right. I mean, 
honestly, from what I've seen from the Canons, and this is not a plug for Canon, but from what I've seen the Canon, they seem to lock focus even when something's turned away much better. It seemed like the Alpha 1 was just drifting all over the place. So, um, you know, and those are finished product because they're shipping. So that was kind of interesting too. Um, let's see here. Fans or no fans, I assume, Terrell, you're talking about for the Olympics. Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, this will be interesting because um, I, I suspected, I think I've said this in the past, that, that they would uh, require us to be, um, have the vi vaccine in order to be on the Olympic grounds. Um, what they put in the latest document that I did not put in the blog on purpose um, is what they're saying is they are asking each NOC, sorry, each national organizing committee, so in my case, the US Olympic Committee, they're asking each NOC to go to the government, their own government, and request that their athletes and anybody involved with the Olympics uh, be kind of moved into the, the up the queue or whatever it would be to get the vaccine. Um, but, it, but there was nowhere in there that said it was required. Matter of fact, there was a line in there saying it would not be required by the IOC. But the caveat to that is the IOC doesn't want to put that kind of stipulation, but the Japanese government can say, you're not gonna fly into the country unless you're inoculated with it. So um, it will be really interesting to, to see where that goes. Uh, and I'm hoping, I don't wanna jump the line. Um, uh, I think that would you know, make me feel not very comfortable, but at the same time, you know, I'm 57. So I think honestly, by that time frame, it should be hopefully a given. And like Jason said, yeah. if the Johnson Johnson and all these other ones come out, there should be plenty of them. So, you know, it'll be really interesting because it could be like the Super Bowl where they say, okay, fine, if you've had the vaccine, we'll let you in. Um, and if you haven't, you won't. Or do they have sections 10 through 80 are for, you know, socially distanced for non-vaccinated? God knows how they're going to do this. So I don't think they'll do that. Um, but clearly they're going to be worried about us as media getting, because we get so close to the athletes. Um, we don't, most of the uh, photographers and editorial staff are never allowed in the locker room, but at least we're in the mix zone with them. I tend to get locker room access because I'm shooting for the team. Um, so it may be something where I go in and shoot when there's no athletes in the, in the premises or who knows. Um, it will be, like I said, it's going to be an interesting story for sure, Terrell. I think, you know, just to kind of, say, you know, here's what it's like when I'm landing. Um, they've told us, please don't use pl public transportation. So they want us to stay on the official press buses because assuming that we've all been negative tested and I don't know how often they're gonna test us but that's gonna happen too. And so, um, which kind of sucks because, you know, interacting with the public is part of the fun. Um, the other question I gotta figure out is, do I need to go two weeks early to quarantine in Japan? Uh, what they're asking us right now is to kind of self-quarantine at home prior to traveling to the games um, and be tested and then we'll be tested when we land which i'm thinking about that that would really suck if you land and you test positive then what <laughs> like you know when you plan for this thing for three years or four years so um the story will be interesting um uh, let's see here. Carl wants to know if I'll be as free to photograph different events like usually. I think there'll still be some freedom to do it, Carl. I just um, don't know if, like I said, if I'll have to pre-plan and make reservations. Like, And then the question will be, do I have to reserve it a day in advance, an hour in advance, or a week in advance? And so it'll be really interesting. And the other thing is they've said that the press area, the main press center with the, called the MPC, is going to run at 50% capacity. So they're obviously going to space people out, um, which is not that big of a concern to me because it's very seldom that it's at 100% capacity. Generally, it's right before opening ceremonies, closing ceremonies, or right after those um, that it gets full or more full. But I've never seen it run at 100%. So I think it's still okay. Um, but again, uh, I don't even know how that will roll. Um, so... Don't know. Uh, let's see here. Sue wants to know, will the airfare cost a lot more than normal? Um, wow, people trying to get back to Australia can't afford the airfare. Wow, did not know that. Interesting. Um, yike. Um, so I've already booked my trip and already 
paid my airfare a year and a half ago because I thought I was going. Um, and I did lock in my flights again already about two or three months ago because um, I try to get in because I want flights right around opening ceremonies and right after closing and they go fast. So it really wasn't bad. Whether they go up or down, it's been hard to say. The other question is on hotels because hotels at the Olympic games are crazy expensive. Um, the room that I'm staying in is subsidized for the press. So I'm paying about 150 bucks a night for the room that a normal person would probably pay 600 a night for. Um, but if they don't have spectators, maybe the room rates are low. So, you know, it'll be really interesting to see how that uh, pans out too, because obviously uh, they said it's already one of the most expensive Olympics in history. I think they said 14 billion, I could be wrong because they had to spend so much money to move them out a year. So um, they need to recoup some of the money back. And I feel sorry for the uh, Japanese government if they can't have spectators and fans because boy, that's gonna be interesting. The other thing they said is no cheering or chanting or singing. So they want yeah. us only to clap for our athletes. And I'm thinking to myself, I'm not sure the, yeah, right, Terrell, like little little golf claps. Like, how would you even do that? Because our our nature is to yell, like go, or I don't know. It it'll be interesting. And then, are they going to have like people there enforcing it? Like, no yelling. I, it, it'll be interesting. And, and then who? And who's gonna? And who's gonna say? Oh, you're yelling, but you're oh, just no. loud. The Japanese are very buttoned up. They will probably have people that will come and say, no, 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 don't do that. I I I, I don't know. Um, they're pretty efficient. They're going to give everybody those <laughs> swag clappers that you got to shake. Oh my God, those loud ones? No, yeah. thank you. I'll no, tell you what. Those stupid soccer things that they Yeah, do those, those, I'll tell you what. I was in, oh. uh, in Russia when I shot the Olympics there and the Russians had some loud things they were doing. And um, I, I've never been upset with fans. Like, cause they're there to have a good time. But there were a couple times where they were like doing the flags, you know, the giant sheets like flags, and they were hitting me on the head while I was trying to shoot, and they were just being obnoxious. And I turned around and I was like, like, can you stop? Like, you know, it was just really irritating. And they were doing those loud things, and I think they had like bullhorns or whistles, and it was like, it was killing me. So eventually, I actually put earplugs in for a while just because I didn't want to listen to them. Um, but uh, I mean, I, the fans are part of the fun, so I, I hate to do that, but. It was a little tough. So, um, you know, Sandy wants to know. Uh, let's see here. Well, uh, interesting. The Winter Olympics, Beijing, February fourth, which means literally this time next year, I'll be in Beijing, um, and uh, right after Tokyo. And um, yeah, I'm also curious. Hopefully, uh, I was talking to uh, one of my contacts at the Team USA last week, and we were saying hopefully by Beijing we can be pretty much past this and not have to be face masked or socially distant, although who knows? The weird thing is, um, this is unprecedented. We are, we have yet to do the Summer Olympics and we're already a year into the credentialing process for the Winter Olympics. So I'm dealing with both Summer. USA water polo and USA hockey for contracts at the same time right now renegotiating everything and uh it's really bizarre to be like actually i probably need to book flights for note to self book flight to beijing good point hold on guys book flight see i hadn't thought of that yet this is a way an add mind works where you just have to like write stuff down i usually <laughs> email myself um, but uh, it is really bizarre to be like thinking summer and winter at the same time. It's it's weird. So I mean, Jeff, uh, Jeff for, for Beijing, are you going to be using the R one X? Yeah. <laughs> no, I'll tell you what. <laughs> if there is an R one for summer, it will be the R one for winter. And actually, okay. but that's standard. Actually, for those of you who don't know, standard protocol over the last 15, 20 years has been summer Olympics are the major announcements, always summer. So it's always been a four year cycle. So for Nikon, it was the D4, D5, D6. For Canon, it was a 1DX, 1DX, whatever. And so um, 
um, this is the first time where you like, I know for sure Canon was not ready for a mirrorless announcement for Tokyo 2020, which is why I got the 1DX Mark III. That was going to be the, our camera to use. Um, and the 1DX Mark III is sitting in a drawer right now because honestly, the R6 and R5 are so good. I actually prefer to use those right now. So it will, but I, but I, no, I, I would, I would expect maybe to see an R1 before the summer games and, and it would still be an R1 for, for, for winter. Then the question is, because we're pushed out a year, is there another one three years later for the games in Paris, which I would suspect there would be. So we'll see. Jeff, um, can I, Jeff, can I yep. come, can I come clean out your, your um, drawer there? Sure. Please. Yeah, yeah really. I mean, I mean, yeah. It's just, it is just sitting in the drawer. Like just just the, I know it's it's sad. I, my I took my kids out. All my cameras are sitting over here on the side. I got my old uh, 5D Mark III, 5D Mark IV, R6. So um, my son and his wife were in town this weekend, and uh, um, his wife wanted to learn to shoot. So we went out and um, I did a little photo lesson for them. So all the cam a lot of the cameras are out, but the 1DX. <laughs> I was going to ask. I was going to ask about the the like the R's and the new stuff that's coming out. So, and I want to upgrade my X and go to the X, the two or the three. Yeah, no, nope, just wait. I would wait. Okay. I mean, at this point, I mean, if again, if you're if you're a sports shooter, a wildlife shooter, and that kind of stuff, yeah. I mean, at this point, I, I think because the Olympics is being, uh, what do we? six months away not even five months away or whatever i think that yeah i would you know i would wait i mean I, i'll be honest with you i wouldn't recommend buying a 1dx mark three right now that's for sure that's what i was going to ask yeah. you that's exactly what my question no, was no i wouldn't i wouldn't because i mean i think that I, I think what i've seen in you know what i've seen with the r5 and r6 the technology is so damn good that um if you take that and make it even better for sports uh, which would be incredible that uh i mean it'll surpass what we're seeing in the 1DX Mark III, so. Um, but were, so you, were you saying, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Were you saying about lenses though, so they're not gonna be compatible? Well, no, all you need is an adapter. So here's my, uh, look, I just happen to have all this stuff laying around. Here's my, my older 70 to 200, and it's got the adapter yeah. on it, right? So 100 bucks for the standard, 200 bucks if you want one with, one with a control ring. And, you know, I've had a couple of them. So you put a $100 adapter on your camera, now you're and using it doesn't it, it doesn't do any it doesn't change anything with the lens or nothing. No. Oh, okay. No. All right. Zero okay. zero degradation. Actually, it's see through. There's no glass. It's just all it's oh, really doing okay. is it's, it's it taking is the older the connectors for EF right. adapting or sorry, it's the newer connectors for RF adapting to the right. EF, and it's okay. uh, fantastic. No no degradation at all. So all right. uh, just because I have a lot, I have a lot of my you know my lenses, and I didn't we wanna... all do. Yeah, and so yeah. I just wanted to ask. Okay, no thank you. No problem. So Carl, A1 is nominally better than the R5, which means the R1 will be incredible. I, I agree with that, Carl. I think that, um, you know, Canon made a comment to me uh, years ago, one of the top people at Canon USA. I said to him, like, why aren't you guys innovating more? Like, Sony seems to be kicking your butts. And he said, Look, you know, Sony's doing a good job. We're going to see what they're doing. We're going to work on it, and we're going to perfect it and come out with something better. And um, it took them a long time to do it, but I think they did. So I'm hoping that would be the case, um, you know, and I think it will be. Uh, Dave wants to know, am I doing any future trips with Mike? I am, Dave. Uh, we've got, uh, we do have Tanzania and Botswana coming up. Uh, we have Japan coming up this year. We've got, uh, and then we've got two more trips to Africa for 2022. And we'll probably add Cuba back in. Um, yeah, we did Cuba last year. We were supposed to do it, sorry, two years ago. We were supposed to do it this past December. Had to scrub that. Um, so yeah, we're definitely doing more trips. Uh, the Costa Rica trips are on my own. Most of the other trips are done through Mike at m, &M Photo Tours. And uh, we had a good thing going between this, so we'll, we'll keep that going. So um, battery rating for the Sony A1, this Dave, uh, is only 430 shots, which, uh, yeah, you see, it seems very low. That's, I would say that sucks. Um, so um, if that's true. Now, one thing to keep in mind, when the camera company has put their ratings for camera for battery life, um, they actually do it at a rate where it has to be kind of a worst case scenario where you're looking at your LCD all the time, and all, which is why I get oh, easily double of what the Canon says. 
So that's probably good for more than that on the Sony, but if it's not, and I know they've had issues in the past, that would suck because honestly, anything less than a thousand shots would drive me crazy. Um, Cause if you look at a typical half day of me shooting a bar mitzvah or a wedding, I'm blasting out 15, 1600 shots in half day. I don't want to change three batteries in half a day. So it would drive me crazy. Um, let's see, Mike wants to know if I'll do any photo workshops on the East Coast. You would, I do want to do some, and I've talked about doing some in the US because obviously we wouldn't have the international restrictions. Um, we will see. I've been saying this for a while. I need to try to get that to happen. We've also talked about doing some of the parks like uh, Bright's yeah. and Zion. I know, I've been saying this for too long. But um, I do want to do some. Um, if, if any of you guys have any ideas of place you want to go, feel free to just email me. I'll put it on my wish list. So uh, we'll see. Echoes. Yeah, Jeff, you got to do some East Coast trips, man. <laughs> Florida, Echoes. right? Yeah, I think we might be able to hang. Jason and I are talking about doing something on in Florida um, or in the, on the East Coast. So uh, I, we have to go over those yeah. dates again, Jason. That may happen. We'll have to see if we can make that work. I was looking at my schedule and, you know, it's still up in the air because of COVID, but we will see. All right, Frank, let's see here. I, I have one word for you. Beck yeah. goes. What's that? Where? <laughs> I have one word. Beck goes. Oh, yeah, we have to go back Beckos. to Beckos. Yeah, everybody meet us at Beckos, my favorite restaurant in New York. All right, there. Uh, speaking of crop sensors, R5 can shoot in one six <laughs> mode. Yeah. Um, so the uh, yeah the R the R5 can shoot in a kind of cropped mode. Um, but like I said, I Frank, I actually prefer to shoot most of the time just in full full res. Um, although the crop mode that I've seen, and I don't like the fact that the R5 and R6 don't have an MRAW. They do have the higher not compressed. They said, don't say it's not more compressed, but they have that, they have C-RAW, which is a little different, um, which is not as really good quality. Uh, the only time I don't want to shoot C-RAWs in really low light, like in Costa Rica, because it's harder to pull the, the shadows without noise. But yeah, it's interesting. Um, Terrell, don't lose my sleeve. Where is my sleeve? I've got, you know, I've got my, my, closet full of all my Olympic uh, bibs and sleeves and stuff. I should break that out. You know what? Before the Winter Olympics in, Be in Beijing, we got to pull that out. And I still have the second one, which I never ever yeah, yeah. auctioned off, which I should. We should do that for no, a No, we didn't. Yep. Maybe for the local restaurants in the area. That'd be kind of cool. Uh, let's see here. Sandy is going to attend uh, Japanese language school. All right. So you're going to be my translator. Uh, and uh, I'll bring you along with me. Let's see, people use it. Let's see. So uh, that's cool. You're going to learn Japanese. Yeah, it's for two years. Wow. That's but cool. But I probably will have to postpone it, sadly, uh, oh, due yeah, to COVID. So. They're not allowing people. Are they allowing people in the country or no? Yeah, right now they are on the lockdown until. 8th of March, I think that was the what the embassy told me. So, but they don't know what happens after that. So, right. if uh, I have to go on 8th of March, uh, sorry, uh, two weeks before uh, 1st of April, uh, I have to quarantine for two weeks. Wow. Uh, but right now, no students at all know what to do. So, that's a bit of chaotic situation yeah, then, I, I have I, I have no I mean my camera bag is packed and everything but you know it's uh, I have no clue what I will do in you know two months in the future right so it's everything is up in there I mean I think this is the hardest part of the pandemic for us is that yeah. it's so much unknown that like you can't plan like for me it'd be like okay I'm, normally I'd be like okay we're going to Costa Rica in April we're going here in July we're going there and now it's like, I think I'm doing this. I might be doing that. And, and, and to your point, you know, it's hard when you're packed up or you paid for tickets or you have someone expecting you there or you, you know, you've got school there and, and like, it's really frustrating to not be able to lock anything down right now. And, you know, it's weird to watch the Super Bowl partying that was happening uh, two days ago after the Super Bowl. Uh -huh. It was just embarrassing to watch all those people that are running around without masks on. And I get that they're happy and I get that they're celebrating. But the problem is if all those people, I'm like, that's great if they want to do that, but don't fly back to California because I don't want to see you here. Because like, I just want to get open again. I want to get the restaurants open again. I want to be able to work again. And you know, finally, 
in our area, the caseloads are down and the hospitals now have some availability. But for a long time, they were at zero. And it's like, that makes it really hard for us that want to go back to work. So it's like, it's really weird to watch that and think. Florida is another world. Yeah, it really is, right? And I know uh, Jason lives in Florida. We've talked about this too. You know, California, well, California is a different world. Because I talked to uh, my contact at the US, yeah. uh, Team USA yeah. and like for USA Hockey, and he's like, hey, in other states, they're playing. But We're here, at both, ex- both extremes. But all right. my friends are shooting down at uh, Clearwater, Florida. They send back pictures, photographers on each other, uh, fans on each other. It's, it's crazy. Right. Oh, it's, it's yeah. the Wild West out here. Yeah. No, it's it, totally. Uh... <laughs> all my volleyball friends are down there shooting. Uh, a lot of my friends have moved down there for the uh, time being just so they can play. And they're playing shooting where are you based Harold? i'm right i'm in malibu california okay yeah you're you're, you're stuck with me I'm, I'm in stuck. california land yeah yeah it's funny someone sent me an email uh two days ago and they said yeah i've been told that you're the uh the one i should contact about the r5 using it for sports can you tell me the proper settings for this business and what have you found with this business and i wrote back and i said i hate to tell you this I live in California. I haven't shot sports with it, really. And um, I reached out to the San Jose Sharks because they are starting their first home game is going to be this Saturday. Because as you know, California, in our area, they're not allowing any sports to happen. So all of our teams had to move to Arizona, including the 49ers and the Sharks, and, and play from there. So home games for the San Jose Sharks were in Arizona up until this Saturday. So I wrote to them, uh, to my contact there and said, can I shoot some of the games? And he's like, nope, because of the COVID lockdown, they're not even gonna let us get in the building. And I said, like, I'll even shoot from the upper stands. Not gonna happen. So um, yeah, it is a different world for sure because, and it's really weird to live here in California and then see on the news or hear from friends, oh yeah, there was a great water polo tournament yesterday. Or, Or you see like, games here with no no fans but then you'll see games at some of the universities in the midwest or east coast and they're full of fans it's like it's bizarre yeah you know i shot what soccer i shot what three weeks ago jeff i was shooting soccer high school soccer stands were full i mean everyone had to wear a mask but there was probably 400 people 500 people at the high school game with a mask on well most of them with masks on i mean they say mask mandate but some of the people that the, the folks that hired me to shoot, uh, they already had COVID, so they didn't have to wear a mask because they have the antibodies. But most everybody was wearing. It. Yeah, but they could still give it to you. <laughs> well, they're very generous here in Florida. They like to give. I mean, this is the kind of stuff like, like, uh, yeah. I mean, the, the degradation of of rules between states and all this stuff. I mean, even in California, you know, Terrell's down in Southern Cal, which is different from here in the Bay Area, which is even different from Sacramento, which is just two hours away they can eat inside restaurants there at 20 or 25 percent and here we can't like so it's really strange based on these tiers they've created and 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 again to look at other states it's it's bizarre i think i think there's only nine states in the nation that aren't doing high school football right now or i mean high school sports right now yeah well we're one of them yeah no we are too yeah crazy I can't wait to, I mean, I, it's so hard because I really want to shoot sports and I've gone over when I tested the R5 and R6, I went over to the beach and just shot surfing because the only thing I could think of that was That's fast moving thing. where I could test. But uh, so uh, let's see here. Uh, Jason's uh, A92 is rated the same. And he, yeah, you get over a thousand shots on that battery. I figured that would be the case, you know, for you rogue Sony shooters, you. Um, Listen, if you can get Canon to send me an R5, I'll give you all my, <laughs> my, my Sony stuff. <laughs> And you keep telling me, damn, I switched too early. <laughs> By like four weeks, I got rid of my EOS R like four weeks before I met you. <laughs> I know. There you go. So um, Frank's saying I need to go to Maine. Actually, good idea, Frank. All right, Frank, are we going together? Are we doing the trip to Maine? You should let me know. Uh, let's see here. John John has to go. Oh, his, his grandchildren uh, from Australia are on FaceTime. That's funny. Yeah, and I, I know Sue's with us. So you're still in Australia, right? Yep, yep, still in Melbourne. Yeah, and are you guys wide open now, I, I, I think? Um, our state, we still have um, some restrictions across the borders, like 
this is the first time Australia hasn't worked as one. Usually it works as one, but we've actually broken down into our states and we've had state borders. So that um, we have to isolate in certain states if you want to go there, or you've got to have um, written permission to cross the borders. Um, but we've, um, I think we've only got like one or two cases in Victoria now. There's not many in Australia, but we get one case and we go into lockdown. We're straight away, you know, like the restaurants have, um, we were never fully open, but they've gone back again. Um, we oh, had sorry, funerals, you could only have 10 people that went up to like 50, I think, because we got one case that went back down to about 30. Um, so are the restaurants but, open at capacity now or no? No, no. Right. Everything even with, still even with just like one or two cases and there's still lockdown then? Yep. If we get that, we sort of went here, we went about a month with no cases. And now because the Australian Open Tennis is on, we've had uh, the tennis players come in to Australia um, and we've had returning Australians come in that go into isolation. And out of those, we had a hotel worker got COVID. So we straight away, it's gone, okay. Everyone that's been around that one person, which ended up being know, maybe about 800 people, they're all in isolation now. It's, which is really, it's, it's so interesting to hear that because you know, when you say you've had one or two cases, for all of us in the in the states or in California, you know, where we're having, we had, I think at our peak, we were at what, 30,000 cases a day, new cases. Day. So to hear one or two is almost comical. I, I don't mean to make light of it. I know what you but, mean, yeah. But it's like... Well, we had, um, where I live in Victoria, we had the world's um, strongest lockdown for, I forget, maybe two months, something like that. Um, you weren't allowed to go more than 5Ks from your home, which is probably two mile. Right. Um, only one person in the car to go to the shop. Um, it was really, really strict. And like it was like $1,600 fines if you didn't wow. do the right things. It was really, really strict. So, and then I forget what happened, but something it's, happened. It's the antithesis and just of Florida. Our state, we had 800 deaths. So, that's the biggest of any state in Australia, 800 deaths. Yeah, so again, we're, we're very lucky, but. Yeah, um, interesting. Yeah. But you're all on the same page. Yeah, you know, we're, we're lucky because we're isolated. You know, we yeah, can, right. yeah. Yeah, well, that's interesting. We still got the dickheads who say COVID doesn't exist, but. Well, but generally, you know, you're going to have people. That's going to happen anywhere. You're going to have people, the conspiracy theories and the, yeah. you know, all that kind of stuff and, and you know, the knuckleheads. But so, yeah, generally we're good. No. Well, I, I'm looking forward to the days when we can say we have one or two cases. Yes. That'd be great. Yeah. You know, and, and then be, you know, and then be done with this. And, uh, but, uh, you know, it's, uh, it keeps going. I mean, it's interesting because I saw that the um, the U.S. federal courts are, are allowing now the churches and um, religious institutions to open at certain percentages, which I thought was interesting because you know, I shoot so much inside of them for temples and things. So it'd be interesting to see if they'll let us in to shoot at least the direct families um, to see what happens with that. Um, because we started to, they opened up and we started shooting at least the rehearsals or, or photos in the temple and then they do it from home, their bar mitzvah at home for Zoom, but at least we can get some photos in the temple. And then that just stopped. So um, I'm curious to see what happens from here. So we're, uh, you know, the, it's just one big question mark again. So we shall see what happens. Uh, I think sorry. Bed, though. It's sunny and warm here, so it's summer. <laughs> oh yeah, that's right. So we'll take the dogs to the beaches later. <laughs> and you can sit outside at the restaurants. Yeah, socially <laughs> distancing, yeah. Uh, sorry, Sandia had uh, one question about fisheye lenses, diagonal or circular lenses. Um, so I, uh, Sandia, I like the, the Canon 8 to 15. Um, and that the one image I posted on, on social media that was the circle, 
was just that, yeah. that lens shot at eight millimeters. It, it did by default, it goes to that circle and you get the chromatic aberrations on the edges, but they didn't care. They loved it. I loved it. it you know, um, it is, it's a cool lens. Uh, it's the only thing you want to be careful with and is grab it. Cause that one happens to be here too. Yeah. Is um, when you're shooting this lens, um, you have to actually take the whole thing off and you have to shoot it like this with no hood. Cause if you shoot it anywhere near anything past like 11 millimeters, you get the hood and the shot. The other thing with shooting with these lenses are you're exposed because it's concave like this, or uh, sorry, convex. Um, you have to be really careful with that front element and banging it up against stuff. So, but it's a, it's a great lens. And like I said, a lot of people say, don't use fish eyes for you know portraits or events. And I'm like, bull, I love it. So, um, and it's fun to do something different and provide something different for your client. So um, it's usually, usually my, oh, um, a lot of times it's my, I've been on bored to death kind of lens. So I'm gonna to switch to it because I've already shot thousands of pictures of the same people dancing. But in the case of that, um, at Bob Mansfa, I was doing uh, three weeks ago or so, literally I was shooting in the back with a 7200 and they had a cool chandelier and I thought that'd be a cool wide shot. And then I was looking over at these balloons they had, I thought that'd be a cool shot with a 7200. So I made mental note of like three shots I wanted to get when they were done. So they finished up their Bob Mitzvah, they said goodbye to everybody on Zoom. And they're, you know, and of course, the younger kids are like, can we change out of our suit now and get back into sweats? And I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. no one do that yet. I got, I got three shots we're going to do. And, and I set up all three just quickly and we did all three, but it was, it's a, a good kind of note to self of like taking mental note of your environment. Like, oh, this would be kind of cool to try this, this, and this. And, um, and they loved it. You know, it was, they thought it was kind of cool. And when I showed them the image on the back of the camera, they're like, what? You know, they were like totally blown away because what are they used to? that right everybody's shooting with their phones and so you know they're used to wide angle but not very good quality and uh you know not shot from you know low positions and different things to get some cool looks so um yeah it's it's fun to do and and you should try it and if you don't have one borrow one because they're fun fun to play with so on that note i gotta go because i have another conference call um you guys all take care i will try to do one before two weeks from now Okay. Um, and uh, I'll keep you posted. Every, is everybody getting is everybody getting this email into their junk mail folders? No. No. Okay. No. no mine comes as oh, always. actually, I did. You did? Okay. Because I'm using, I switched over to MailChimp because I can just blast it out in one click versus having to do like a bunch. So um, we will keep doing that. And uh, uh, I will keep you guys posted on anything here on the Olympics. I'll make a uh, note for our next call to kind of keep you up speed on anything else I'm hearing. So right. yes, stay safe. Keep getting those shots. And thank you. See you all soon. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks a lot, Jeff. Bye, guys. Thanks, Jeff. Bye. No thank you. Thanks, Jeff.